Um, so we are here with uh, Adam Twardog, who I'm very fortunate to call a friend because he's a great dude and a great dancer too. Uh, he's products and marketing at Font Lab, and Yuri Yarmola, who is actually the lead development of this fine type design uh, software. So yeah, this is already 30 years almost. You soon will have your 30th anniversary because I saw that started in 1992. So. Yeah, you I should throw so. something. Yeah, so let's hope that by in two years that all the whole thing is over and that we can have parties again. Because that will be, good. be yeah, that will be cause for celebration. So everybody, uh, welcome Adam and Yuri. There should be an applause, but I don't. I should have this button, you know, like in television series, like yay, hey, we're all excited. So let's uh, let's take it away, Adam. Go for it. I will mute myself now. Um, can you? Can everybody see see the big F font lab icon? Is that? Yeah, the screen share works great. Yeah. Okay. I'm out. Good. So I'm gonna. Try. Yep. Hello, I'm Adam, and um, I'm here today live um, from my little place, as pretty much everyone, uh, I guess, um, to talk about FontLab 7 and specifically version 7.2 that we are just um, about to release in um, the public beta, um, but also to talk ab about um, some things that uh, people you know, may have seen or may have noticed in FontLab, uh, but um, haven't really focused on it, haven't tried, or maybe you know some of you guys maybe um, thought, well, okay, I need to choose between different apps, but. Uh, we're, try we're trying to make FontLab kind of better every day. We pretty much uh, improve a feature or fix an issue every single day, and we're um, publishing, try to publish either kind of semi-regularly intermediate updates, um, or in this case, we've taken uh, some time out or actually taken some time to implement um, a few larger things. So FontLab 7.2 will be free uh, for everyone, for all users of FontLab 7. Um, and well, upgrades from other versions are um, affordable, all the versions of FontLab and Fontographer and Type Tool. Um, in 7.2, we focused on um, interchangeability with uh, different apps. So I'm not going to talk much about it today, but um, we have support for uh, custom parameters and custom lib uh, for glyphs and UFO files and design space files. So you can read them, you can export them, and you can edit them in FontLab. So interchange between uh, projects project files made in different apps uh, should be much uh, more fluid. But let's take a look at uh, a few more things that, um, that FontLab uh, 7 has, okay, or 7.2 more specifically. Okay, sorry, there's, uh, no, no. Yes, faster interpolation. That's what I wanted. Okay, come on. Sorry. Yes, now we're back on track. So faster interpolation. Well, um, FontLab supports interpolation through the uh, variations panel, and um, in FontLab 7.2, we've made interpolation 30 times faster, which allows you to work in a fully new way. So what you may have known is um, you can use the sliders to drag along the axis and preview the instance in 
the preview panel or in the text mode of the glyph window, uh, you can also see um, in the preview panel, turn on preview interpolation. And that uh, kind of plots the current glyph along uh, two locations that you select in the variations map. And um, this, you know, when you edit, um, you can see how the interpolation works. Of course, in this case, I've turned on uh, power nudge, which uh, causes the, um, the nodes in the middle to interpolate. If I bind sign bearings, um, meaning I turn on these two buttons, then when I modify the outline, the side bearings are actually constant. So um, that's handy if you're playing with, uh, with different widths. But now in FontLab 7.2, mm, well, there was a play and stop button, uh, but that kind of worked slow. But now in 7.2, you can actually edit and see how the preview panel sort of plays along one axis and interpolates as you edit. So you get a very, very um, sort of interactive preview in of the whole text as you make as you make changes. And in fact, um, this is um, Science Gothic by Thomas Finney and team, and this has thirty six masters and four axes. Um, so it's a large project and you can either click the play and stop mm, on one axis or on several axes and watch the interpolation live or even command click on any of the play buttons and then it's playing along all the axes that you have in a font and that still when you um, well, I'm gonna pause here and play just one axis. And as I edit, the changes are re reflected live. Uh, when I drag, the playing sort of pauses a little bit, but it's really very, very fast and fluid. In previous versions, it was kind of impossible to work this way. Now, when it comes to type design, there is always this question of consistency. And we've had this functionality of suggest stems for a while. I just wanted to um, remind you how it works um, because we've added something uh, to it. So suggest stems, well, if I draw something and just a couple of simple shapes, uh, even in just one glyph, um, I can use the live measurement, the quick measurement and see how large it is. If I go to font info and stems, click auto, I get stem entries. And now when I draw uh, some shapes, whenever nodes are close to a stem value that is in font info, uh, a suggestion, a green suggestion appears and you can snap to them. So you can add a couple of widths and then have this sort of, you could say, dynamic grid based on the stems appear as you as you draw or as you edit. Now we've also extended this to support suggest distance, which, well, the stems, as you know, um, are either vertical or horizontal. So that's only the distances you, you could get suggested. But with suggest distance, it's slightly different. You can, um, I'm going to do add variation, so I'll just add a master and the weight axis automatically and clone the current master. Now here, um, what I will do is I will, um, well, turn on quick measurement. Okay, I see 74. I guess you don't see the number. 74 units is the stem. I go to font info, other values. There is suggest distance, X, I enter 30, Y, I enter 10. And now when I, uh, drag or selections, a sort of outer outline, outer contour at the defined distance appear to which my edit can snap. So I can very, very quickly 
uh, let's say I've I said okay I want 30 units distance suggestion so now I'm kind of easily adding the 30 units on either sides and um, I can of course change the value uh, uh, when I want but this this let lets me it's not like automatic bold which never really works but it's uh, really assisted um, you know I can get some consistency if I need that the same here for the O but in this case I'll I'll sort of drag it inwards twice the 30 units so in this case I um, it's also going to be the same distance um, sorry just the same, the same st stem thickness um, now with again bind side bearings and power nudge is on so I can um, make the O a little wider and I have very very quickly um, you know change the weight prototype of course because it needs more massaging but the, the very very first step uh, getting these values equal is sometimes very handy now variable components so as I said we've uh, made interpolation of variations much faster and we also added actually in a previous version but now in 7.2 we're making it better variable components so let's say I have uh, my two which has three masters interpolable in generate the glyphs I can see say two superior two superior uh, equals two so uh, it's gonna build the glyph two superior I'm gonna put the component uh, digit two into all the layers so now I have two and I have the glyph two superior but of course I need to adjust it so what can I do well what I could do is in the elements panel Mm, expand the properties now let's say I set a scale 60 percent now I can click on those sliders okay so by default font lab limits the design range to where the masters are I can go to font info access graph uh, access access graph extend the limits and that allows me to do extrapolation so now I can click drag the slider and I'm extrapolating um, so I, I have a variable component I will uh, set the side bearings to equal to two of course this could be any expression or value drag it up again I could uh, enter this numerically copy the expressions the side bearing expressions to the other masters so there's always two and now I repeat this for the other masters so because you may want to choose different proportions and of course uh, you may want to pick um, a different instance so there was a, a little cut there but yeah I I'm picking a slightly bolder instance every time and the two superior is variable and it's in every master the component refers to an interpolated instance of another master now when I modify this um, you'll need to use font update glyphs to see the update in the component but but that's a component so it's live it always reflects the rest attached components now that's something that we've expanded in 7.2 we had this concept of auto layers which uh, allow you to build your glyph completely automatically assemble it from components using a recipe a sort of text uh, little text expression that you can um, enter there's a special syntax and whenever the underlying glyphs change or whenever you move anchors um, these change but that's um, so order layers have a particular limitation and that is that really the content is completely locked it's always built automatically according to this recipe and now that's easy to use when you're doing simple composite glyphs for instance you put a lowercase a put an anchor a top anchor then you make a, an acute or acute com comb glyph um, put the underscore top anchor and then make an auto layer for a acute 
Fontlab puts these together, snapped, uh, they snap to the anchors, and whenever any of the underlying glyphs change, the order layer changes as well. But there is no manual editing, and that's um, not practical. On the other hand, if you turn off order layer, you can move all the components freely. But with attached components, there is a middle way. So when you attach a component, then that particular component will attach in the composite glyph using the anchors, the corresponding anchors, so like top and underscore top. But the other components are still freely editable. And now it matters which um, component, uh, the order of the components matters. So for instance, in this particular case, I've placed the F component, then the doctor's I, and then the acute. Now, the dotless I has a top anchor, acute has underscore top, so it snaps to the top anchor of the source glyph uh, of the I dot, dotless I uh, source glyph. But if I add, um, sorry, I've dragged now, um, actually, I've dragged the acute component uh, between dotless i and f. So now it's f dot, uh, acute dotless i. If I add a top anchor of a f, uh, which is easy, you hold the G key, press shift and click. And then um, it adds top. Now the acute component snaps to the top anchor above, uh, inherited from f. But again, if I, so if I move, mm, the component moves, but if I drag the order again, if I change the component's order so uh, that acute is after dotless i, it snaps to the top component inherited from the dotless i source glyph. Um, and if there aren't, if there is no top anchor in the preceding, or the matching corresponding anchor in the preceding com uh, component, then it tries the yet preceding component and so on, and until it finds uh, a corresponding anchor, and if it doesn't find it in the source glyph for the components, it finally checks the current glyph layer. So it will snap to a top anchor in the uh, current glyph layer if there aren't any top anchors in any of the component it, uh, sources it tries. And it even works, as in this case, it even works after you decompose some components. So font, uh, FontLab will then inherit um, an anchor from the kind of topmost component. In this case, the top anchor was inherited, inherited from dotless i, and the i component still snaps, attaches to that anchor. So that's kind of the, the last resort. So I can edit the um, kind of contour portion of the glyph, and I still have um, a component attached to an anchor which is something that wasn't really previously possible. And um, since uh, the glyphs format also has a similar mechanism called automatic alignment, we kind of um, import and export, or FontLab 7.2 import and exports these values, so attach components and, this autom and the automatic alignment uh, kind of are similar concepts, so, so they convert. Right, now let's have a look at um, one more thing, a uh, big thing, that's the lookups panel and functionality associated with it. Now, uh, previously, FontLab had the feature syntax, the Adobe feature syntax and a feature panel. Now I'm gonna show you when I open a TTF uh, that has 
an Arabic um, open type, uh, true type flavored open type font uh, that has open type features. Um, in preferences, you can decide which glyph names, um, whether glyph names should be renamed when you open a font to one of the four schemes, production, um, friendly, alternative, or uni. Or if you turn off this, uh, then it'll be original glyph names. So um, there's also a setting, what should happen when FontLab decompiles um, features, whether classes should go to the classes panel or should be inlined in the feature text as um, sort of fee classes with brackets. Now, when I open this, um, I, I here have um, sort of friendly names because that's what they were in the font. And um, on the bottom left, you can see the features panel, which has the text representation of the feature definition. But now the new lookups panel, which is on the bottom right, uh, shows you um, a visual kind of structure of all the substitutions. You can explore them. You can sort of check visually what the uh, what each feature actually does, whether all the glyphs um, are um, being substituted, or maybe some you know false friends or some 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 glyphs are substituted that shouldn't be because uh, if you use FontLab or some other code to automatically generate features, sometimes, you know, an, an extra glyph may sneak in because of some glyph name suffix, but you actually don't necessarily want it there. So, so this is a, so the lookups panel in this version allows you to, to, to get like an in-depth look at what the feature structure in the font is. And uh, here you can see that I've opened uh, this font and it has a class to class substitution. So it's init and medi are replaced by init. And in the in the rightmost, in the sort of um, right area of the new lookups panel, you can um, see the blue are the class-based substitutions. You can double click and see every member of it. But FontLab also has a different way of decompiling features. In preferences, if you turn off simplify substitution rules, then rather than doing class by class and producing classes, it will just decompile by uh, simple glyph to glyph substitutions, which may sometimes be easier. So uh, so now I've, I've reopened the font and now it's just single, a series of substitution rules that are simple uh, glyph by glyph substitutions. Now, this version also lets you, because the lookups panel stores, actually it stores the open type feature data in a format that is very similar to Microsoft Vault. And in fact, FontLab 7.2 lets you, you can export feature projects to Vault, to Microsoft Vault, edit them in Microsoft Vault, and also import from Vault. So, Unfortunately, Microsoft Vault does not like hyphens in glyph names because it's a um, it's a product that well has been around for twenty years or so and hasn't been really updated recently. So, before I export my stuff, I renamed my glyphs to production names. So they're now Uni. Now I can go to File export font as I've uh, customized the export profile to make sure that um, I'm using current glyph names, whatever they are. In this case, the, uni the, the production names, but um, the default uh, true type export profile always renames the glyphs to production names. But in this case, well, you may want to keep your names. If you don't use hyphens, then there is no need to rename these glyphs um, to production names. So just use 
current names if you're exporting for Vault, and that's what I what I'm doing. And I also go to File Export Features. And here I can choose two formats, the feature file that everybody knows, but also Vault project file. If I um, export it and well, then I can go to Microsoft Vault. Microsoft Vault only works on Windows. It's a free app. Uh, the release notes for FontLab 7.2 when we'll publish the beta very, very soon, they will contain links to, to the app. It's an app that lets you visually edit uh, features. And of course, the Adobe Fee format is great for substitutions, but it's not really very good for positioning. So with Microsoft Vault, you can, uh, you can edit positioning features, mark attachment in rich detail. So now I'm, I'm in Windows, I'm in Vault, I open the TTF I've just um, exported. And I import the VTP, the Vault project file. I have the features. Um, I can edit a particular substitution. Here I'm just changing, well, I'm inserting a wrong glyph. It's Vault, so it's not, it doesn't have big previews, but now I'm gonna export project, the Vault project. Then I go back to FontLab, import features, um, choose the modified Vault feature definition file, and I do have that new substitution. So I can import, export, and I and um, FontLab 7.2 stores this data with the VFC or VFJ file. And now, since I'm done with Vault potentially, I can rename the glyphs back into friendly names. Now, uh, because when you work with Vault and FontLab, you can actually uh, create complex script fonts. And well, I've, I thought, okay, what about if I try to, to use an older app of ours, Bitfonter, which is a which lets you to create bitmap based um, fonts in the photo font format and also a bunch of older bitmap formats. Uh, what it can also do is you can open a um, a TTF. You can create a bitmap based project. So I'm rasterizing the font that I've just exported at uh, 300 ppm grayscale. And well, it's there, it's got bitmap images, but what's fun is that I can set up Bitfonter to export it into PhotoFont in such a way that uh, Bitfonter will write a small XML file that is with the extension PHF. It's a very simple um, a file that, um, it's a little bit similar to the UFO um, sort of header, and all the glyph data will be written as an extra PNG. All the glyphs uh, in one huge PNG. There are limits to that, so you can, if you want higher resolution, you should use uh, separate images, which is also possible here. Extra space, 1%, maybe I would have, um, it's like padding around these images you'll see in a moment. Maybe I could enter a bit more than 1% there. Um, so uh, yeah, I've chosen. I'm. I've set up the preferences for the uh, photo font. Now I'm exporting to PHF, and that's the big image. I can open it in something like Photoshop, and well, I can do something with it. So this is just very silly. I'll just do you know like an emboss filter, uh, just to show that you know it 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 really. Um, it's possible to be playful. Um, now I'm saving the PNG and open, opening the, 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 the PHF, the photo font that links to that PNG in FontLab. And FontLab actually reads 
Photofont file. So you can see that in on the right hand in the preview panel, there are these embossed Arabic letters. I can copy the features because the Photofont format doesn't know anything about the features. But since we've used the same glyph set and the same uh, glyph naming, I can copy the features that I've just created in Vault or using Fee or whatever. And um, I can export the font, customize the profile, make sure that both OTSVG and OTSBIX are on, export the font, and then, well, mm, oh, one more thing, Bitfonter adds the Unicode 0001 to the not dev glyph, make sure that you remove that when you have opened PHF. That's just like an old bug in, in Bitfonter. Uh, so I've removed that. And I'm, now I've, I've dropped the, the font to Axis Praxis, um, the, the, the SPX font, in fact. And I'm previewing it in Safari. And I can see um, that I have features for Arabic. And I have sort of a bitmap-based um, glyphs derived from the from it was actually Noto Nas the Apache two license version that I've used. So um, you know I could be playful, but of course I could create my own uh, much more sophisticated designs um, because I'm I'm really glad that now with color open type despite the fact that there are many different flavors, there's still, you know, the, the, there is this emergence that um, they're coming. We've seen, um, you know, some uh, content about it at this ATI Pi, which I, I'm really glad. Now, uh, in the last bit, I wanted to just mention uh, something really cool, and that's Vasil Kat Katelyev has been devel developing a kind of a mega plugin for FontLab 6 and now 7 called TypeRig. And TypeRig consists of a couple of different modules. We're going to be publishing some tutorial videos um, that Vasil has produced on our uh, YouTube channel, which you can visit when you go to fontlab.tv. But this is just a very, very brief uh, kind of uh, taste of TypeRig. So here, uh, the head section of type rig is kind of the scope uh, where stuff should be happening. And there are these tabs in the type rig panel that are really very powerful. So in this case, for instance, um, Vasil is choosing to align all the nodes to the right. And um, he's doing it in active master. But now when he turns on masters, that happens in all the masters. Uh, you can choose um as many many different control operations that you can you can run um node aligning is just a very simple of course with edit across glyphs if it's on you can do it across many glyphs in the glyph window um and yep that you know works across across masters now um type rig also includes uh, Delta machine, which is a, um, a implement, implementation of the, um, uh, the, the papers that uh, Tim Ahrens has published on um, anisotropic interpolation. I'm not, well, I hope I'm saying it right. Probably not. But... Um, with Delta Machine, uh, you can kind of use it to uh, create things like small caps very, very easily. This is, again, a font with uh, well, more than 30 masters, I think. And uh, it's possible to use the user interface, but it's also possible to set up some JSON files where you have the parameters, the scaling and the interpolation for every master. Um, and well, you can, um, there's going to be some more info about how it works, uh, but you can Google for Delta Machine or Type Rig. 
Um, you know, very easy, very simple. Of course, you can also rerun these tran transformations uh, multiple times and update uh, things like small caps or other transformed um, uh, transformed glyphs. So that's um, kind of everything that I wanted to show. If anyone has questions, we will happily answer them, or I'm not sure how we're doing with time. Eve, do we still have any time or? Yeah, so we yeah we still have uh, 18 minutes. Yeah, just as a general information for the audience as well, um, the sessions are automatic, so it cuts off it's a hard cut off at at uh, at uh, well in 18 minutes. So we have time for questions. I haven't seen any questions in the chat box. So if anybody has a question, please ask them. Oh, there's one appearing. Okay. So uh blah, 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 blah. Hey, yeah yeah yeah. Um and Rand asked that in the in the um in the chat earlier um whether um uh, 72 simple to feature is entirely absent in the current release. Are there any uh, features that are getting de decommissioned? Um, I. So I understand. Uh, features entirely. Whether a seven. Oh, I see. Whether these things that uh, are coming in seven two, whether anything is completely absent. Well, um, attached components is completely new in seven two. Um, Suggest distance is completely new, but suggest stems uh, was there before. Um, there's um, there's a bunch of things that are new, uh, and the seven two will will be published as public beta. Uh, well, any day now. And okay. There's going to be a long release notes that I highly recommend to read because the release notes that we're publishing with Font Lab seven it are kind of a little bit like a blog so it's not like just yeah. ah this is change this is change but i'm trying to kind of give a bit more detail so there's a longer write-up that i've worked on about how open type layout generally works and how it works with the functionalities in font lab so i i i highly recommend reading the release notes uh with they will be go yeah they'll be live any day yes. now Ideal for those long winter nights when you don't know what to do. Right. Um, there is a question from Lawrence Penny, who asks, the parallel outline editing is great. Can it work at a different rate in the thin from the bold? It actually is, the suggest distance is a per master setting. So, uh, so yeah, so you can... Um, I'm not sure if that's what uh, you ask, but anyhow, the distance is a per master setting, so different um, distances you can set it up for uh, on different masters, and well, x and y uh, separate. Okay, then there is a question from Ricardo Diaz, uh, who is a complete type creation software newbie. So this is your sales pitch, Adam. Better do it right. What's Font Lab's unique selling proposition or competitive advantage, and what's the pricing for the next release? Take it away. So the uh, um, the full uh, release, uh, the 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 full price right now is four fifty nine, but four hundred fifty nine dollars. But uh, we will be. Do, very soon, we will be doing a kind of a short sale with a discount. Just um, we wanted to do it at ATIPI, but you know all the preparations and everything. So, so just uh, you know, come back tomorrow, and there will be um, a, a friendlier price for a few days. Um, upgrades are one ninety nine from five, and ninety nine from uh, version six. Uh, academic discounts, um, educational one year, for instance, eighty nine dollars. Uh, well, it works on um, you know Mac and Windows, so um, and actually even on Linux, if you run it with Wine, you get okay. the same license for 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 
all the platforms. And um, you know the the versions that we develop now, the really cross platform. So basically, the versions in Mac and Windows appear the same day, which is not so in the older versions of Fontlab Studio Five because the porting process was very complicated. Well, I um, I would say there are people who say that you know Fontlab has great drawing tools. I think so too. It's really easy to draw curves. Um, FontLab 6 had battled with some stability problems because it was a complete new application yeah, so that when was we released it uh, almost three years ago. But we've worked really, really hard. Mm. Um, and yes, 7.2 will be free for all 7.1 and 7.0 customers. That's a good question. Yes, so that version will be a free update. Um, we, uh, FontLab can open uh, design space, UFO, VFB, VFC, the current, and VFJ, the new FontLab formats, also Glyphs files, and it can export these formats. So you can basically use FontLab as a very good switchboard between different formats, a very smart converter. You can open variable fonts, you can export variable fonts, color fonts, anything. There's many open source projects that you can kind of study in FontLab. Great drawing tools, um, currently not superb at sort of complex script or automatic feature generation yeah. for for um, non-Latin scripts, but uh, now you can work with Vault, but we're going to be improving it further. So, uh, yeah, it, it, uh, it's really the drawing, spacing, and kerning is really, uh, really nice, and of course, variable fonts you can have any number of masters and axes if you want um so yeah it's uh, it's, so it's it's great as standalone but it also works really well in a hybrid environment where you have to go from software to yes software. and in fact quite a few people these days the you know they started yeah. using font lab but they interchange data with people who use different uh yeah. apps like robofont or glyphs and uh We've worked hard to make that uh, that integration, you know, as good as possible. There are s and seven two actually makes it really much better. We've we've really uh, kind of put a lot of effort there. Okay, um, we are running to the end. I'm going to check one last question that we're going to handle. Uh, uh, quickly, uh, people, if you have more questions, Adam, do you still have time to go uh, to the hangout room afterwards, or uh, is, yeah, are sure. you too busy? No, okay, no, I'll, so, I'll actually be, uh, yeah, happy yeah. to. So everybody knows, I hope everybody knows by now, we have this Hangout Room. This is a, a sponsored by S S Sandal. And uh, so you just head over there, and the uh, speakers often go there afterwards, after the session, and then you can add more questions or have discussions, conversations, whatever. So one last question, and then we, we end this. I wouldn't, uh, is there any project, we'll, 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 and already, Yuri is already replying. Is there any project to get VFC, VFJ files working directly in FontMaker, if that font is make. your preferred, yeah, FontMaker, um, if that is your preferred build process. Um, not quite yet, uh, because the well, we're yeah, the file format is quite complicated. Basically, it would require uh, um, a separate implementation of. Uh, many things that are there in FontLab. Mm -hmm. We're hoping to improve that, but right now what uh, what we recommend is basically that it's possible to run scripts on FontLab. So you can run a FontLab from the command line with a VFPy script extension. It will execute a, the script and then optionally quit. That script could open a VFJ and export design space and UFO, for example. Yeah. And then FontMake can consume that. So as long as you have a FontLab license, uh, you can have automated build processes that integrate in with FontMake. And in fact, uh, if you had to support that FontLab.com, there is a little article there how to do it. And it's going to also be mentioned in the release notes for 7.2. 
Great. Uh, Ricardo Diaz, thank you so much for copying the questions from the general chat to the Q&A chat, because people have not understood that we have a separate uh, channel for the Q&A. It's otherwise too difficult to search for these uh, questions. So uh, one very last one from Eben Sorkin. Are there any features that make visually testing your fonts easier or better? Um, well, the I would say, yeah, well, you, you, Yes. So, for instance, the actually 7.2 now uh, has this uh, this nice thing which is called apply wrap. So, basically, the glyph window in FontLab is a really large text window, and you can you can um, and you can also do use Sketchboard, where you can place multiple uh, windows, which is uh, something Vasil enjoys doing. Uh, he actually made his presentation using FontLab on the sketchboard. Wow. So that was his slides. But um, even if you don't do that, the so the 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 text that you paste into um, a multi-line, uh, sorry, into the glyph window works so. There was manual wrap, and then it basically created one super long line. And if it was set to auto wrap, it always wrapped at the end of the 100% zoom of the window. Great. But of course, when you have variation, different masters wrap differently. So what we've done now is we we added something called apply wrap. So basically, you put your text, choose your your widest master, say apply wrap, and then you can switch to the other masters. And of course, from the glyph window, you can print or you can create PDFs. Yeah. Um, so that's uh, one thing. The other thing is the new lookups panel that lets you see deeply into the features but of course FontLab also has HarfBuzz integrated so live testing of features uh, uses the same code when you type in text and you yeah. turn on checkboxes it uses the same software that let's say Chrome or Android uses so Sandy. it's de facto standard uh, open type layout engine so yeah that hopefully that's a uh, yeah browser preview um, is something that we'd like to see happen and hopefully yeah. um, will happen sometime. Okay. Okay, we're seven minutes out. Uh, people, we have to wrap this up. So again, go to the Hangout. Adam, thank you so much for the presentation. I was a bit scared when you do the live screen share, but it worked out perfectly. So you handled it perfectly. Thank you so much. Thank uh, you so much. We're, we're going to end this here. Uh, well, actually, not me. The tech team is going to like boot us everyone out and then go to the Hangout room, and Adam will be there. Yuri, maybe yep. too. If you have more questions, just go over there. And thank you again. Good night. Thanks, guys, and see you later in the Hangout area. That's the spirit. <laughs>